They revealed Far Cry 6 a few days ago and woof, this is a big one. They have really gone all out and we have a lot to talk about. Hi right, folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, 10 things you need to know about Far Cry 6. Starting off with number 10, there are new companions called Amigos. Instead of Guns for Hire or Fangs for Hire from Far Cry 5, this game has Amigos, and interestingly enough, they don't include humans. All of the Amigos you can bring in for help are animals, that's right, animals, in this game. This contradicts an older interview with the developers that said a jaded XKGB spy would be one of your amigos. So it's pretty clear that somebody changed their minds about having human companions at some point. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be more, but we saw two of them in the trailer. There is a crocodile by the name of Guapo, which basically does exactly what you'd expect. It attacks enemies and eats them. The most bizarre addition we know of currently is a dog in Chorizo. It's a little dude in a makeshift wheelchair that can apparently distract enemies. Sounds like it can make things easier for stealth if you use them properly, but it's it's interesting. They've teased at least two more. You can check out some of the pre-release stuff. Um, there's also a rooster and what looks to be a panther as well. From everything we've currently seen though, the companion system seems to only allow you to bring one of these guys along. Kind of like how it worked in New Dawn rather than two like in Far Cry 5. But from the way that they've put it together, it may really be some interesting dynamics that it generates. It looks different at least. At number 9, the map looks absolutely huge. A Reddit user by the name Paul Morrison 90 posted a screenshot of the entire map of Yara, which pretty much shows us exactly what Ubisoft has been saying. It looks really big. The map is split between a couple of different zones. Uh, the central green area looks to be like the jungles, what we're seeing in trailers, the sort of more brownish yellowish spot above it is probably the capital, and then the white zone might be like a mountain environment or something. They're obviously trying to give us at least a few large differences in landscape and possibly vary up the gameplay accordingly. Uh, the South is apparently a more dry environment, for instance. It's all a little bit speculative at this point, but another interesting thing to note is that there is a small island at the bottom left, maybe a tutorial island like you start off on in Far Cry 5, or perhaps an end game area. We don't really know right now. We basically have to wonder what that is currently. Considering the game starts with your character trying to escape Yara on boat only for it to be destroyed by the military, it makes sense that the place where you start the game is out in the ocean, but it's equally possible this could be like a boss island, like similar to where you fought Voss in Far Cry 3. Probably the most noteworthy thing we've seen in the trailers about the map is the city. The capital, Esperanza, is the biggest city on the island of Yara, and it's a first for the series, an actual population center that is dense with buildings that you can explore freely. That means you can get up on the rooftops, you can explore back alleys. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that is possible here that's just never been in a Far Cry game for one reason or another. It seems a lot like the toughest enemies in the game show up here, which, I mean, makes sense. It's the capital, so you're probably expected to holster your gun and try to keep a low profile while you're here. It also looks like there are other towns on the island, but Esperanza is the only big city in the game. While it doesn't look huge on the map, it does look pretty dense, so a lot of traditional Far Cry strategies will not work there. It's, I mean, just a nice change of pace to see that in a Far Cry game. At number 8, the RPG stuff from Far Cry New Dawn is returning. Now, uh, this is a big one. In an interview with Jor Raptor, the developer stated that the slightly divisive RPG mechanics introduced in New Dawn are going to be making a return in Far Cry 6. Uh, one of the big things players complained about with that game was that if you were too low level, it became really difficult to deal with some tougher enemies, but it sounds like they're trying to dial that back a bit. They want to have parts of the map have more dangerous enemies, but they don't want it to be a total roadblock. Apparently, perks will be attached to specific pieces of clothing as well. They compare the game to a system scene in like uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Ghost Recon Breakpoint, which is... It could be an alright combination, we'll see, but hopefully they don't end up making this game into a real grindy chore. And number seven, outposts are changing. One thing you'll always be doing in Far Cry games is clearing out enemy outposts, and that is not different here. But from what we've seen in the trailers, it looks like there's going to be different ways to go about clearing the bases in the game, and it might even be possible to eliminate an outpost without having to meticulously kill every single guard in the area. 
Uh, we don't know for sure, but we do know that the developers have said there will be more options for how players can deal with outposts in the game. Another important thing to know is that you can reset outposts like in Far Cry New Dawn. That means you can repopulate a base after you've killed all the enemies in it. In that game, you could specifically earn more resources doing that. But we do not know exactly what you get for resetting an outpost in this game, at least yet. Um, another important bit of information that they dropped in the interview with Joe Raptor is that the map won't be empty after you beat the game. Like, okay, remember how in Far Cry 5, after you defeated each region's boss, the enemies would just clear out, making it so that there really wasn't a lot to do after you won? It's not going to work out that way in this one. Uh, exactly what that means, they have not said. Uh, will it be like the Division 2 where the map gets invaded by a foreign enemy? Or will the army try to attempt to take back outposts at the end? Or, or, or what? Who really knows? But I am definitely interested in seeing what happens here. At number 6, a lot of fan favorite stuff is back. Like, the trailer showed off some features that some fans actually missed in some of the more recent games. One of the big ones is actually non-violent activities. Like, it looks like you can play dominoes in the game. And maybe you might not consider this non-violent, but you can possibly participate in cockfighting. Like, the trailer showed a bunch of people standing around holding chickens. But I do not know if that is a story scene or an actual side thing. We will obviously keep you updated as we find out stuff like that. Other returning features include vehicle takedowns and knife takedowns. The vehicle ones are especially cool because of the new vehicles you can hijack, which include a tank. Um, it looks like those like gross emergency healing animations are back as well. At one point in the trailer, your character smokes a cigar and puts it out on their arm. Like that's gotta be one of those low health healing animations. Cause w why else would, would your character do that? I, I don't know. And this one isn't really something returning, but a lot of people thought it was strange how you couldn't ride a horse in Far Cry 5 considering the game took place in Montana, but it looks like you can actually ride one in this game, so they probably listen, and that's gonna be cool. At number five, you can holster your weapon now. It's not one of those things that sounds like a huge feature on paper or anything, but that can actually have a pretty big impact on gameplay. Hitman, like, style open world stealth looks kind of possible at this point so holstering your gun makes it so the army wouldn't attack you on site in non-restricted areas so it'll probably be a lot easier to explore the world without getting into forced combat when you don't want to like saying goodbye to constant attacks from enemy trucks and dudes at the side of the road like in far cry 5 it sounds appealing to me like now you can travel in peace once in a while another cool feature is it looks like you can trick guards to get through checkpoints so in that respect it may be possible for missions to play out in various different ways at one point in the story trailer you can see danny wearing a soldier's uniform suggesting that you can change into disguises as well which definitely like could be a story mission so it might be a scripted event and not some kind of gameplay system but from everything we've seen it kind of seems like that's what's going on like when the one guy's talking to you in the voiceover in the trailer about how we lead our operations in secret camps across the country and all that it cuts a few times and your character's wearing different clothes which leads me to think it's possible and if so very interesting at number four, there are a lot of guns. Like, it's no surprise that Far Cry 6 would feature some weapons. Like, duh. But it looks like they've taken complaints about the lack of weapon variety from Far Cry 5 to heart. Like, there is so much on display here. From the more traditional weapons yielded by the Yada army to the DIY weapons used by the rebels. Like, the trailer showed stuff like a minigun with a motorcycle engine on it, some kind of railgun looking thing, a fireworks shooting rocket launcher of some kind. There is just a lot of stuff to take in. Probably the most amusing is the saw launcher from New Dawn, but it's back as the CD launcher and plays the Macarena when you fire it. That, that is, it, yeah, exactly as ridiculous as it sounds. Uh, some of this seems to be tied to the crafting system, which the developers seem to want to emphasize. Some of these weapons you apparently have to build yourself, which means there's probably some kind of resource collection like a new dawn. Uh, at the moment, we don't really know how crafting is actually going to work, though. All they've said is that there is crafting. So does the game have full-blown weapon customization? It seems like it, but 
I don't want to say for certain. Another noteworthy new feature are the Supremo backpacks. Special weapons you wear on your back that are incredibly powerful but seem limited in use. They showed off a few of them in the trailer. There's what looks like a backpack that spreads fire in an area around you. Like a rocket backpack that can fire a volley of deadly weapons and possibly even destroy tanks. Uh, one that looks like there's a Tesla coil on it with some kind of electrical effect, which is absurd, but I mean, there's more beyond that even. I don't know exactly how these things work yet. Like, do you get special ammo for them? Do they work like a super ability that has a cooldown? Do you collect them? They're single use? I don't know, uh, but they do look like they're fun as hell. So, I mean, no complaints. At number three, we're back to playing a character. Um, unlike Far Cry and New Dawn, where you just played as like a faceless deputy and security chief, Far Cry 6 is back to having you play as an actual character named Danny Rojas. At the start of the game, you can select their gender, but it doesn't seem like you can do a lot to customize appearance outside of that. From what we've seen in the trailers, it looks like their personality comes through a lot more in this game than previous protagonists from other Far Cry games. Also, the new third person cutscenes probably help out with that a lot. <laughs> One intriguing feature we've seen in the trailers is it does seem like we might be able to move around in third person in this game. Like maybe it's only possible when you're in a safe zone or something, but it seems like there were moments in the trailer that showed the character walking around in gameplay in a third person perspective. We'll see. At number two, there is co-op. Uh, the developers have confirmed there is co-op in the game. They have not shown any of it though, but we can only assume that it's probably going to work similarly to Far Cry 5 and New Dawn. One important thing they mentioned in an interview with Jor Raptor is that progress will be saved for both players, not just for the host of the game, which is a welcome improvement. I really like that, but it will also be interesting to see exactly how co-op is implemented otherwise. Finally, at number one, the trailers put all the focus on Anton Castillo, the ruthless dictator played by the always awesome Giancarlo Esposito. But it looks like there may actually be other bad guys you'll have to deal with as well. There was a really small thing I didn't notice myself the first time watching the trailer, but as pointed out by Reddit user Art of 18, there's some graffiti that shows five figures being puppeted by Anton, which suggests there might be five underlings you'll have to deal with, similar to the Seed family in Far Cry 5 and the governors from 4. Like this is a lot to extrapolate from just one piece of graffiti, but considering that sub bosses appeared in both four and five, it's not far fetched to think they might return again in this game. A couple of quick bonuses for you. Uh, there's no arcade mode. For certain players, this is a huge cut, by the way. It had this really cool additional feature that let you play custom levels created by the community. That's not in the game. Thing is, it was really popular with some of the community, so removing it, kind of a disappointment but not everybody cared either, so I don't know. I liked it. Finally, the game is set to release on October 7th for all major platforms, PC, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, PS4, and of course PS5. It is not coming to Steam. It is an Epic Store game and Ubisoft Store game. It's also going to be available on Ubisoft subscription service, Ubisoft Plus. That is all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.